Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on sound waves. The topic of this video is the mathematics of closed-in ear columns. And we want to know what are the formulas that one can use to solve a physics word problem pertaining to closed-in ear columns, and how can one use these equations to solve such a problem. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed closed-in ear columns, and I've left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. In this video, I'll be discussing how to use this information to solve physics word problems associated with closed-in ear columns. You'll need to understand the standing wave patterns, the relationships between frequency and wavelength, and the formulas. You also need to have an effective strategy. In the second column of this table, you'll notice that the standing wave patterns are drawn for closed-in air columns. And at the left end, the closed end, you always see a node. And at the open end, there's always an anti-node. Because of this stipulation, the number of waves that you'll find within each pattern is 1 quarter, 3 quarters, 5 quarters, 7 quarters, and 9 quarters of a wave. Because the numerator of these five fractions are odd numbers, 1 quarter, 3 quarters, 5 quarters, etc., all the harmonic numbers are odd numbers. You'll notice in the first column we have the first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth, but there's never an even numbered harmonic for closed in air columns. The fifth column of our table shows the wavelength relationship. You'll notice that the wavelength of the nth harmonic is the wavelength of the first harmonic divided by n. This relationship comes from the standing wave patterns in column 2. You'll notice for the first harmonic that there's one quarter of a wave within the pattern. But for the third harmonic, the wavelength is smaller and we can fit three quarters of a wave within the pattern. Since you can fit three times as much of a wave within the pattern for the third harmonic, its wavelength must be three times smaller than the wavelength of the first harmonic. We can apply the same logic for the other harmonics within this table. You'll notice that for frequency in the sixth column that the frequency of the nth harmonic is found by taking the frequency of the first harmonic and multiplying by n. In the seventh and eighth column of this table, we show how you might use these relationships to find actual numerical values. These, these two columns are based upon a 60 centimeter length closed in air column that has a first harmonic frequency of 150 hertz. So for the wavelength of the first harmonic, I'm going to take 60 centimeters, the length of the air column, and set it equal to one fourth of a wavelength. I can multiply both sides of the equation by four and end up with the wavelength of the first harmonic is 60 centimeters times four, or 240 centimeters. In metric and meters of units, that would be 2.40 meters. The wavelengths of the other harmonics are simply 2.40 meters divided by three by five by seven and by nine. For frequency, I take the first harmonic frequency of 150 hertz, the given value, and I multiply by three by five by seven and by nine. To summarize the relationships for closed-in air columns of length L, we can state that the wavelength of the nth harmonic is the wavelength of the first divided by n, and the frequency of the nth harmonic is the frequency of the first multiplied by n. As it is for anything that is wave-like, the speed of waves is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And finally, the wavelength of any harmonic is simply 4 divided by the harmonic number multiplied by the length of the air column. My approach to solving closed-in air column problems is based upon this graphic organizer that you see here. All the quantities that you'd find in a closed-in air column problem will be listed on this graphic. The three most common ones are frequency, wavelength, and speed, and they're related by the equation v equal f times lambda. If you know any two of these three quantities, you can solve for the third quantity. The frequency of all the harmonics are associated with the, one another by the equation the frequency of the nth harmonic equal n times the frequency of the first harmonic. And finally, the the length of the air column is related to the wavelength of the waves that cause the resonance within the air column by the standing wave pattern. If you know the harmonic number, you know the standing wave pattern, and you can determine the wavelength from the length and vice versa. As I go through this video, I will be relying upon this graphic organizer to plot out my strategy as to how to solve a problem. 
In example one, I'm given the frequency of the first harmonic and I'm asked to find the frequency of the next three harmonics. And in example two, I'm given the standing wave pattern for an unknown harmonic and its frequency value and I'm asked to find the frequency of the first harmonic. In both of these problems, I'm asked to relate the frequency of various harmonics to the frequency of the first harmonic. So I'll be using the formula Fn equal n times F1. In the first problem, I write down what I know, F1 equal 125 hertz. And I write down what I'm looking for, which are the next three frequencies. You'll recall that closed in air columns don't have even numbered harmonics. So what I'm looking for is F3, F5, and F7. I know Fn is equal to n times F1. So to find F3, F5, and F7, I take the 125 hertz and I multiply by three, by five, and by seven. In the second example, I write down what I know. I'm looking at this pattern and I'm thinking, that's the third harmonic. And so I say, I have the third harmonic and F3 is equal to 360 hertz. I'm looking for the value of F1. Fn is equal to n times F1, so F3 is equal to three times F1. To find F1, I need to divide both sides by three and get F1 equal F3 divided by three. 360 hertz divided by three is 120 hertz, the value of the first harmonic frequency. In example three, I have the seventh harmonic of a closed in air column and I know the frequency value is 882 hertz and the speed of sound waves is 344 meters per second. So I write down what I know, seventh harmonic, F7 value, and the V value. And what I'm looking for, I'm looking to find the length of the air column. Once you've written down what you know and what you're looking for, it's time to plot a strategy for how to get from the givens to the unknown. And that brings me to my problem solving framework in which I put in blue rectangles what I know. I know the frequency and I know the speed. And what I'm looking for, and that's the green rectangle, the length. To get from the givens, the blue rectangles, to the green, the, uh, the unknown, I'm going to have to first calculate the wavelength of the seventh harmonic. Once I do that, I'll use the standing wave pattern to find the length of the air column. So here goes. I begin by calculating the wavelength using V equal F times lambda. The wavelength of the seventh harmo harmonic is V divided by the frequency of the seventh harmonic. That's 344 divided by 882. Comes out to be point 0.390 and some change. I'm going to write down the rounded number there on this page, but I'm going to use the unrounded number in my next calculation. Now that I have the wavelength, I can find the length using the standing wave pattern. Here's the standing wave pattern for the seventh harmonic. And if you count the number of waves within this pattern, you'll notice there's seven fourths of a wave. So I say length equals seven fourths times the wavelength of the seventh harmonic. Now in this L equals equation, the numerator of the fraction on the right side is always the harmonic number. The denominator is always four. So now I'm going to take the unrounded number that's on my calculator, the 0 0.390 and some change, and multiply it by seven and divide it by four and then get the answer rounded to the third decimal place. It comes out to be 0.683 meters. In example four, I have a closed in air column and I know the length of the air column is 62.0 centimeters and I know the speed is 340 meters per second. I'm going to write down what I know. I'm going to take the length of 62 centimeters and I'm going to divide it by 100 to get 0 0.620 meters. That gives me a length value with the same distance unit as my speed value. I'm looking to calculate the lowest three frequencies. Now, I know that uh, that closed in air columns only have odd numbered harmonics, so there's no F2 or F4. I'm looking to calculate F1, F3, and F5. Once I've listed what I know and what I'm looking for, I'm going to head to my graphic organizer to plot out my strategy as to how to get from the blue rectangles, the knowns, to the unknowns, the green rectangles. I know the speed and I know the length of the air column. So to get to the, to the frequency of the first and the frequency of the other harmonics, I'm going to first calculate the wavelength of the first harmonic. So from the standing wave pattern for the first harmonic, I'll calculate lambda one 
With lambda 1 and speed known, I can calculate the frequency of the first harmonic using v equal f lambda, and then I can use f in equal n times f1 to find the frequency of the other harmonics. So you'll note that there are three steps here, beginning with calculating the wavelength of the first harmonic from the length of the air column. So here goes. I draw the standing wave pattern for the first harmonic, and I notice there's one quarter of a wavelength within the length of the air column. That means length equal one-fourth wavelength of the first harmonic. As always, the numerator in this L equal equation for the fraction on the right side is always the harmonic number. The denominator is always four. To find the wavelength from this equation, I'm going to have to multiply both sides of it by four. The wavelength of the first harmonic equal four times the length of the air column. Four times 0.620 meters is 2.48 meters as the wavelength of the first harmonic. My second step involves using v equal f times lambda in order to calculate the frequency of the first harmonic. So I take the v equal f lambda and I divide both sides by lambda. I end up with f of the first harmonic is equal to speed divided by the wavelength of the first harmonic. So I take my 340 meters per second and I divide it by my 2.48 meters to get the frequency of the first harmonic, one of my three answers. Now to find the frequency of the third and the fifth harmonic, I take the unrounded number on my calculator and I multiply it by three and I multiply it by five to get 441 hertz and 685 hertz for my F3 and F5 values. In the fifth and final example, I know I have a closed-in air column resonating in its fifth harmonic, and I know the frequency of the fifth harmonic is 590 hertz, and the length of the air column is 72 centimeters. I want to calculate the speed of sound within the air column. Once I write down what I know and what I'm looking for, I'm off to my graphic organizer to plot out a strategy. I know the frequency of the fifth harmonic and the length of the air column. To get the speed, I'm going to take the length and first calculate the wavelength of the fifth harmonic. I use the standing wave pattern to do that. Once the wavelength of the fifth harmonic is known, I can use v equal f lambda and the given f value to calculate the speed. So here it goes. I begin by drawing the standing wave pattern for the fifth harmonic. I'll notice within the length of the air column that there are five fourths of a wave. So L equal five fourths times lambda of the fifth harmonic. I can divide both sides by five fourths or 1.25 and I can get the wavelength of the fifth harmonic to be 57.6 centimeters. Now that I know the wavelength of the fifth harmonic and the frequency of the fifth harmonic is given, I can say V equal F times lambda to calculate the speed of sound within the air column. When I do that calculation, I'll get the speed in centimeters per second. I can divide through by 100 to get it in meters per second, and then round to the second significant digit. I get 340-ish meters per second. I have now worked out five example problems, each being of a different variety. It's difficult to predict what variations you might have upon these examples, but one common variation involves a problem in which you must calculate the speed of sound in air from knowledge of the temperature of air. You would use this equation here, in which the T in the equation is the temperature of the air in degrees Celsius. One thing that is very predictable, though, is that practice makes perfect. It's more than a slogan. It's the method by which any physics student can become a better problem solver. To facilitate to facilitate your practice, we have a section on our website that gives you a collection of well-crafted problems. You can answer the problem, get immediate feedback, get opportunities to make corrections to your answers, and click on links to helpful information specific to that problem. It's called the calculator pad, and we've left a link to the calculator pad in the description section of this video. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have the calculator pad, which I was just referring to. You have a Minds on Phys Physics mission that gives you additional practice in Finally, you have a tutorial page with example problems and worked out solutions. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.